Hello there everybody and welcome to the SA Anatomy channel. My name is Savvy and for this video we're going to be working on an owl's anatomy. So get your drawing pads ready or whatever you're using to work on and let's get started. For this video I wanted to have a more optimized model to work with. This will probably be how I'll start each project from now on. Before, in previous videos, we figured out different ways of making the base mesh that we could start using in a sculpt. We tried the quick and easy ways, we also tried the long and tedious ways, but each of those methods were just to help in the sculpting phase. This method is so that we could use this model in different places. Say for example, you wanted to have an animal with just its echo shade showing in a game, for example, then this topology, this good topology would help with that. Of course, you would be able to animate it, you would be able to use it in different places rather than just using it just for the sculpt and then it's just for still renders or something like that. Unfortunately, in this video, I will not be showing how to bake down all the details from the high res to the low uh, to the low res mesh via textures. But you can find different tutorials out there. There are many tutorials that actually show how this is done. But perhaps in the future, I will be able to show everyone how to actually get one of these models game ready, how to rig it, how to animate it, and then throw it into Unity, for example, or Unreal, and then use it in that sort of space. But for now, we'll just focus on making this proper topology so that we could actually sculpt onto it and it's a lot easier it's less taxing um, in blender and you're not spending a whole a whole bunch of resources just on this one sculpt but in any case good topology is usually just always key it's it's good to always just have good topology in in whatever you're working on if you're working on just a simple character that will just be used for still renders then yes it's fine you know that this character will never be moved it'll never be animated or anything like that and i have mentioned before that good topology is always good for these cases even if like it's just going to be standing there and it's just stiff it's never moving it's still good to have low res models in a scene rather than having high res models everywhere unless you have a beefy computer yes sure you can have that and some engines do allow you to just ignore topology altogether but still it's still good for practicing for example and it's also good to understand why you need good topology in certain areas for example here if we had good topology it is so much easier to sculpt over the topology rather than having something that has has pinches everywhere it has edge loops everywhere and then when you're sculpting you do start noticing the difference that when you're sculpting an area that has a lot more vertices you'll get a lot more details there but then if another area right that's right close to it has perhaps n-gons for example you'll find it that it's quite difficult to sculpt over that sp that space as well even if you have a multi-resolution modifier on it is still going to be adding uh, um, loops over n-gons and it will still try to even if you have a subdivision modifier blender will try to fix the edge loop issues around that area and sometimes it gets it right but it is still working with what it has so sometimes it'll just sort of mess things up it'll, it'll cause more problems than actually fix so it's just best to have good topology so from now on i would like to have all our characters all our models all our animals and creatures and anything that we work on have good topology so that whoever is working on this and you guys who are watching these videos you would be able to use it anywhere when working on your model this doesn't even have to be when you're working with you're trying to get good topology or not this just has to be something that you always have to do you have to make sure that your normals orient your face orientations are are facing the right direction they're they're correct if for example in blender you check the face, um, the the normal's face orientation, then your mesh's face orientation. Then you'll see that there will be red spots or blue spots. The blue is good, the red is bad. It just means that that face is uh, currently orientated incorrectly. It's facing the wrong direction. 
this will be a problem when sculpting you'll notice that sometimes for example if you're trying to add detail instead of it increasing the the surface area it'll just start decreasing it'll start indenting rather than extruding so this is a problem for many reasons obviously then if you're texturing you'll notice some artifacts some issues with the normals you know, when you're when you have like your normal map or your bump map or whatever you're working on or even you're just on your base your basic um, albedo map or your or anything really so it's just always good to have good topology also make sure that your face orientations are correct and make sure that you don't have engons make sure that you don't have uh, you can have triangles triangles are okay some people think that triangles are bad they're evil it's it's okay to have a few triangles here and there it's just make sure that they're controlled make sure that you have as much control as possible you can't just have a star loop or somewhere around here you can't just have a bunch of triangles everywhere mixed with engons mixed with um floating verts here and there some some faces aren't connected to, to other parts of the mesh and that kind of thing just they always double check your mesh uh after even after uh, uh, retopologizing or even after uh, making the character you always just have to make sure that everything is correct Another reason why good topology is best for any model that you're working on, I might be sounding like a broken record here, I, I have mentioned this before I believe, is that when you're animating, if you have good topology, it's, you're able to actually have a lot of, a lot of freedom when animating uh, a certain mesh or, or a certain object or character or an animal or anything that has good topology if it has bad topology and say for example you have an arm that just doesn't have enough edge loops over the shoulder or by the neck or anything like that the mesh will kind of squish into itself or it will be pulling from certain areas that you you don't want that to happen you want it to just flow as normal and as, uh, as organic as possible if you're doing something such as uh, you you have a hard surface model and your say for example you want to animate a a cylinder or uh, a tire for example a tire that has all its connections into the car and all that usually you won't have th organic elements within like mechanical models or anything like that you won't really have issues where you'd be struggling to move something in an organic manner because it's all supposed to be mechanical but if you're working on characters animals anything organic you have to have good topology if you're animating again the tire the tire itself would be a separate object then the connection to the tire would be a separate object. If the tire is spinning, then obviously the car or anything uh, in the car, the connection shouldn't be spinning. Like if you have like pipes or anything connected to, 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 to a piston, for example, you wouldn't want the top of the piston to just blend and move mesh uh, to, to the bottom part of the piston that's connecting into it or pipes that are flowing into the top of the piston or anything like that. Maybe I'm just talking out of my behind at the moment, but um, anything mechanical, you would want to just make sure that it's fixed and uh, anything organic, you want to have as much blend and as much organic movement as possible. It needs to look as fluid as possible too. I know sometimes when we're working on big projects or we're working on something that we've been struggling with for a while, restarting is usually something that we try to avoid a lot. I myself have done that in the past, but I've come to realize that sometimes you just can't fix the issue. Sometimes you just have to start anew. But don't remove the previous mess ups. Don't remove the previous project that you're working on. Don't delete it. It's good to keep that as reference to try and make sure that you don't make those same mistakes again. So restarting is not always a bad idea. It also gives you a whole new perspective. Now you know 
that okay i've made a mistake here i've made a mistake there now i can try to make sure that i avoid those mistakes so restarting is good usually when when i make these kinds of videos i usually have a test um, file that i just mess around in but i'm not usually going in there to try and make mistakes or anything i am usually going in there to try and practice the animal's anatomy so i would just do it at least once one a quick one i don't do it for all the videos i just do it for a few few of them just to make sure that okay i know that what i'm what i'm doing here what i'm sculpting here is correct sometimes it's not a hundred percent sometimes i don't fully get it and sometimes I, I don't always do this but i should really do it all the time for like all the videos that i work on so that i am well versed in whatever i'm doing i i know that okay i understand that okay this muscle is supposed to look this way this tendon is supposed to flow this way it's supposed to come here connects here connects there the bicep is supposed to move this way this bicep femoris is supposed to move this way the gazing is supposed to move from here to here the pectorals i hope that whenever you try to work on a project and you feel like it's just not going anywhere you're able to actually tell yourself okay it's time to restart but at the same time don't just restart just because you think that it's always good to restart only restart once you've come to a point where you say where you think okay i just can't continue can't carry on anymore with this project and i'm it's now becoming a whole mess it's just a whole heap of problems and issues and errors it's sometimes just good to say okay i understand that okay this is a problem let me restart now i'm going to take that information that i learned from the previous project and then grow on that expand on that now i know that okay these are the mistakes that i've made before these are the mistakes that i will try to avoid these are the mistakes that i'll learn from one of the many great things about working with organic characters or organic shapes is that you can make a lot of excuses not every animal is going to look the same not every lion looks the same so sometimes if you feel like okay i just want a lot more creative freedom here i want to i want to i want to make this this muscle a lot bigger than 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 the other character that i worked on or the other animal that i worked on sometimes it's obviously you still have to lean in the side of realism you still have to like try and make it fit in that um in that sense you have to kind of like okay say all right i can make this uh the uh the uh the pectorals large but it still has to make sense everything still has to be proportional and it still needs to add up you can't just start adding a whole bunch of shapes a whole bunch of like new new shapes into into the sculpt and saying oh no it's it's my creative freedom right but that's a good thing about working with organic shapes or working with characters or working with animals it's that you can you can cheat a lot you can you can cheat a lot if you're working on mechanical things you have to almost always be exact you have to you have to be as perfect as possible with organic shapes if i was working on a character's face for example i can sometimes have a lot of imperfections here and there because the human face is not a hundred percent one-to-one or perfect you're, you're gonna have like some few issues here and there one side is gonna be a lot uh, a lot different from the other side and if you're working on a character's face one eye might be uh, lazier than the other one or uh, you'd notice that one side of his cheek or the character's cheek is, is a lot larger than the other than the other side so you, you could have a lot of a lot of fun with with working with this just as long as you understand what it is you're doing if i was working on the extensors for example for an animal and then i need to make sure that okay i get it as close to to accurate as possible then i'd need to do that i can't just say oh yeah no i can just add a bunch of lines here and then call it call it a day i still need to understand that okay this will this part connects here this part connects there that sort of thing i can't just fake it all the time 
but that's a good thing about working with organic shapes still is that you you can fake it all the time but the amount of times that you can fake it the amount of times you have freedom to do whatever you want to do with the sculpt it's it's a lot it's it's a lot compared to if you're working on mechanical things usually when i work on these sculpts i do have the bones as reference but i don't use them at all in the final final project i usually just have them there just to, as a guide just to remember that okay this looks like this this comes here this goes there that sort of thing but at the end of the day i do sculpt in that detail myself so if i wanted the fibula to pop out if i wanted another type of bone to pop out then i will have to sculpt it in myself afterwards i don't just um, add the the actual skeleton mesh into the final into the final cut or the final project usually because it's just too intense sometimes you just want to have you want to have just the sculpt and then the, the the skeleton unless i was doing it, it had a purpose it served a purpose i was going to show that okay this is how the the muscles connect to to the bones perfectly if i wanted to animate or make a, an actual full uh, muscle system make a whole rig then yes i would have the bones there but there would have to be low poly as well so that it's much easier to animate but usually when i when i work on the sculpts i try to match the detail of the bones onto the sculpt itself you don't have to do this you don't have to follow this method 100 percent. i just prefer to do it this way it saves up on resources i don't have to i don't have much to render i don't have uh, a whole new object to to account for i just have this one mesh this one object with its own level of details with its own level of details and its own modifiers to worry about i don't have to worry about the other model again like i've said before you aren't always going to get the reference that you want especially if it's an animal like an owl for example you're usually going to get just the owl itself with its feathers and everything sometimes you have to kind of frankenstein the project and get references from other animals like if you're working on the lion or a human really if you're working on a, a, a kangaroo for example and then you have information on the human you could try and pose the the, the human on and, and try to match the same pose as the kangaroo because it's almost the same it's almost so close it's, it's so close to just being the same thing so that's the interesting thing and that's the cool thing that you can do especially if you just don't find the right images that you want the right kind of references that you want so for the owl i use references from falcons from an eagle from other small birds i use references that i could find of an actual owl and then the rest i just kind of match together like frankenstein it together like the ana the anatomy of a parrot the anatomy of uh of of a vulture and that brings us to the end of our video i hope you enjoyed i hope that you learned something whilst watching this video or following along i hope that you are able to work on your own character work on your own animal work on your own sculpts and actually have something that you're proud of at the end and even if you feel like it's not good it's again it's okay to restart or just try again don't feel don't be discouraged don't stop the project just because one project just didn't feel right you can still carry on and i will see you in the next one